Let's do the camera. Let's finish off this night with the camera. Because we've, we've, we've gone over everything else. So, this red circle means that you're in the camera mode. And wherever you move your current camera, you can highlight it, press the check mark, and that is where the camera will exactly be at that point. And this, as you saw, oh well, as long as you're in camera mode, it'll follow the camera whenever you move the timeline. But when you're outside the timeline, it doesn't follow it at all. Unless you click this. Now it does. So, I said it again. I am terribly sorry. <laughs> I guess that's my thing. Uh, compared to everybody else. Uh, field of view. That is how much you see. Yeah, so that's intense. This is great for different kinds of views from like helicopters or mimicking like cameras or skateboarding cameras or doing some Ant-Man style stuff. Like, let's move it forward a little bit. And then just change the field of view to be extremely massive. Hell, you can actually have it be way above. You can just keep going up. Yeah. This is how real PC gamers play. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Alright. So, just like the... Oh, well, okay. Just like this, we have position and angle that can be adjusted here. The only thing that this has that you can't naturally do is the Z angle. This is how you roll the camera. Oh yeah, get that Dutch shot. Dutch angle shot. Then you have distance. Now, when you zoom in the camera, uh, it changes the distance. This can be heavily affect how things move. If you have a distance of 92, your camera is going to move like this. If you have a distance of zero, yeah, let me move to the side. It's gonna be a little bit hard to move, but whatever. Right, let me swap the camera over. You can see it's looking more like a first person view. This is awesome for doing first person view kind of stuff. If you want it, no, nah, everybody, everybody likes first person views from down here. Come on, don't kid yourself. Now, on to the next option. Perspective. Hell, enable. This is pretty much enabling the camera. But perspective versus orthographic. Everybody does perspective. Orthographic is... Yeah, that's if you're trying to do like a video game effect. Uh, remember those good old Game Boy Advance games? That's exactly what it looks like. Alright, back to perspective. Alpha, I believe that's pretty much... Yeah, that's... I mean, we're still seeing from the same camera. Dynamic FOV, you kind of don't need this. Um, if Once you get used to uh, checkmarking the FOV, or field of view. Because then you can just animate yourself rather than relying on whatever the hell this is. Relate to model. This is awesome. Watch this. Relate model is just like everything else that you've seen, but the camera can be attached to the model as such. The hell are these even called, man? But anyways, if that part of the model moves, the camera will, yeah, of course, the camera will follow it, as if it's attached to the bone, like, like, like this. Requires a different setup, but it's pretty cool if you have, like, a car moving and you want the camera to follow the car without any problems whatsoever. Now, back to... The now to the lighting. This is useful 
for adjusting the lighting in the scene. So red. If you really want things to be red, of course you can't see much here, but if I lower these two, make sure to know your color wheel. Then you have a little bit of red setting. Green, let's move that up. Pretty much lighting. And without lighting. Ooh, that's interesting. Another cool thing, and I personally set the shadow to be on the ground for this, so it's very visible. So notice how the shadow is facing that direction. If I take this, I can move the lighting of the scene, the global lighting. It's literally moving the sun right here. You can even have it set to afternoon or directly underneath. The way I did um, movie night was using this exact method. I think the camera's literally inside the room right now. Yeah. So I moved the lighting to be directly in front of the TV to get that harsh look. Now, self shadow. I'm glad I did this. Okay. Distance, the closer it is, it's going to get less shadows that are out there. But it's going to be more detailed up close. I do not have it on self shadow. Okay. It's going to be more detailed up close. As. Holy crap, what the hell? It might be a little glitchy, so it's best to have it blur out a little bit. There we go. But if you notice the background back there, the further out it goes, it's going to be less detailed all around, all smoothed out, but you get more of a general area. So you want a high distance for cities and low for rooms. Like right up here, you can see that shadow moving based on distance and the quality of it. As it's way smoothed out. And yeah. Okay. Deepness. This is going to be very obvious. It's how dark your shadows are. Gravity. Gravity is useful for physics animations. So if I set this, this physics to always, currently the gravity is 9.80. A lot of people who want smooth hair set to 0 0.1 or 2. And as you can see, it's only going downwards. But it adds a more floaty effect to it. As you can see right here. Now noise, this is wind. So in case you're outside, it adds noise on top of the already jitterness to it. So let's see. Z? No? Alright. That's fine. Uh, so mostly adjusting these adjusts where gravity is going to go. There we go. I think the hair is pulling directly backwards now, which is pretty interesting. So she's going sonic speed right now. Right, actually, it's pulling a little bit backwards and towards that way. So gravity can be very useful adjusting it for fixing physics that look a little bit jittery. LSPSM. I have no idea what that is. Anyways, filter. I don't use this anymore ever since uh, because it cancels out the HG effects and stuff uh, when you turn on tone curve or anything like that. As you can see down here, HG effects or the shadows for that chair disappear. But it's this line here. It's just like interpolation, but instead the lower part is shadows, dark. The high part is brightness. So you can make some really weird effects if you double click the line to create a box and then you start doing some weird stuff with it. But generally, you can make it seem have more contrast by just double clicking down here 
and double clicking up here. So here's the difference. Actually, let's, let's move this down a little bit more. Yeah, contrast. Same as any Photoshop program. This is hue, saturation, and is it v v v v v v v value? No. V. Oh, whatever. It's V. It's. Why am I forgetting the word? Usually it's how much color is applied to a certain part, but I never touch this because it doesn't seem to follow the actual path of hue, saturation, and vibrance. There we go. But it doesn't seem to affect it. It just feels like it affects exposure, rather. Yeah, whatever. Fade. This is for fading the camera, seeing the black. Or red, or white. As adjusted right here in their color wheel. I believe that is it for the camera. Grayscale, well, these are pretty easy. All you do is click these and it turns on the options for that. Interpolation, that, well, that's this right here. This box. But this is all that I pretty much know about the camera. And spline, I just don't know what those do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it follows a set path or something, but I don't even know how to set that path. Just make sure to watch your distance, because when you scroll in, you're actually changing the distance uh, rather than doing anything else. So when you are at distance zero, the only way to I eight. The only way to animate first person view is going to the side and panning with either the middle button or this right up here. Because you're not actually zooming in, you're moving the camera when you do this. Zooming in is field of view. Oh, I think that's it for interface.